My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. All right. Hey, um, Vahid, my name is uh, my name is Dr. Aaron LeBauer. And for everyone listening, I am a physical therapist and I am a business coach for physical therapy um, entrepreneurs. I live in North Carolina and we, I own a clinic as well as a coaching business. So in our clinic, we help active people stay fit and healthy without pain meds, injections, and surgery. And over the last uh, eight years, I've been helping other physical therapists scale their time, their income, and their impact, creating businesses that give them freedom. You know, what I noticed is, as a matter of fact, I, I got a good buddy of mine who were doing a, a whole entire process, a course on law success off of Thinking Grow Rich. And mm -hmm. he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a chiropractor also too. A lot of individuals don't know what it takes to run a practice. Right. It's uh, it's crazy when he would tell me the stories, and I'm like, oh my god, this is way more complicated than I thought. I thought people come in there and they just get adjustments. That's right. what was on my mind. And then when so tell us what is it entitled and how do you get started because it's it's not an easy process. Right, you know, it's one of those things where it's not easy, but it's simple. <laughs> Right, right, so it's right, like, right. It's like starting a regular business, but I also have to make sure I have liability. I have to make sure I comply with the laws in our state. I have to make sure that, um, you know, if I'm dealing with insurance or not, like, how am I going to do that? But the number one hurdle most people like miss is healthcare sales. They get into healthcare to help people and they're afraid to sell when what they actually know is their service helps people. And um, that's the big thing that people struggle and they don't really get through. Because if I don't do that, I can't actually get patients to come to our practice. I can get them to call, but I can't get them to actually come in and get the treatment they need. That is very, very important. So how important is it for, for, for individuals that are in the medical field, health field, what do they have to do on the self-development side? I almost feel like, they can read a lot of books. They could do a lot of self-development, but I think they need a mentor or coach that's kind of like guiding them. Just telling right. them what to do may not work. I think you need to guide them. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They Basically, everyone in health, uh, medical, physical therapy, chiropractic, physicians, every, they've, they've gone through um, graduate school. They've had clinical mentors. They've had clinical instructors. And they get out and they want to start a business but they won't go and get business instructors, business mentors, and do the same thing to learn business. And so what they really have to do is spend as much time and effort and even invest as much or more money in learning the skills in business because they're just as important because a, a great therapist or provider isn't always gonna be, be a great business owner and be successful in business. They'll struggle a lot of times especially to grow and scale and get more time back. So let me, let me hold that point. What mm -hmm. are the top three challenges that they commonly face that you see repeat over and over? Um, they're really smart. So it's, uh, I need to know. Uh, if I don't know the answer, like I'm afraid to go find it or ask a stupid question, <laughs> right? Number two, um, paralysis by analysis. So too many options. There's too many types of apples or too many types of, um, medical records or do I use infusion soft or active camp? I mean, who cares? Like just make a decision. So it's the well, no, no, no. Listen, don't use yeah. infusion soft. Definitely use active campaign is way better. <laughs> so that I right? can give you an answer. You know, whoever tells you otherwise, send it to active campaign. But I use my own, I use my own system, but, right. but I know active campaign is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I use too. But you know, there's little things where those two have big differences, but you might get in and go, well, well, if someone spends five, you know, five days or five months deciding between click funnels and lead lead uh, pages, right? And they've just missed ten thousand dollars in sales by trying to figure it out. Just use them both. You know, you're going to make more money. Um, and then the third thing people struggle with, I think it's it's one, it's asking for help. Two, it's making decisions. And and three, thinking big enough. Like, how do I help more people? Like most people get into this and they build a job for themselves or they get into a partnership that's just a job for themselves, but they're not looking at what's the bigger picture. How do I help even more people, not even one-on-one -on -one in person, which is very pertinent to what's happening today with the coronavirus is, is if your job and business has relied on you seeing people one-on-one, -on -one, you can't make as big of an impact as you can one-on-many. So 
how do I go and do that? So let's say I'm, I'm, I'm in that field or I'm just mm-hmm. a business owner that I just started and everything else. But keep in mind, maybe budgeting might be a problem as far as right. like the investment that I have. So what are free sources that I could get to start and then transition into, you know, actually paying for mentors and coach? Are right. there things that they could do on their own that they should be doing? Yes. Yes. So one, there's plenty of information on Internet and Instagram, YouTube, et cetera. Like, how do you start a practice? How do you market a practice, et cetera? You can get you started. What? And then it's um, and then it's just figuring out, like, who do you like? Who do you trust and taking action on it? You know, because if you can get a lot of resources, but you don't take any action, you're not going to make any progress. You really need like a little checklist like I have for um, physical therapists and healthcare providers, I've got a checklist that I used myself in starting my business. I was like, well, I'll just give this away for free. And it just helps people understand, here's the steps I need to take to get started. Grabbing books and courses, and then you figure out, okay, I like this person, I like what they say, they resonate with me, then go pay for their products and services because you'll get even faster results. And then the next thing would be, when, I, when you asked that question, I thought, well, how do people start reaching more people? We just share what you know. You know, it's like, that's, that's how I got where I am. I just share what I know. And um, people are like, gosh, Aaron, you're the first person to talk about this. I was like, well, why wasn't anyone else talking about it before? Just share what you know on social media. Social media and YouTube, Instagram is so powerful these days that there's no better place to, to do that because you can help someone you I don't even like know. I feel like if you give value, doesn't matter what industry you're in or what you do. Right. You may, this is my challenge for a lot of entrepreneurs is that they think because your content is valuable and you just put it out, the, the minute they put it out, they expect that moment to reach and the, the content for, right. the, for the consumers to reach or go viral. And a lot of times I say no, because some of the good YouTube channel videos that have taught me a lot of good stuff had only 500 views, 700 right. views, 1,000 views, because it's very, very specific. So that person doesn't say, oh, I only got 500 views, so I shouldn't put the content out there. Nobody wants it. That's 500 individuals that is specifically searched for that, specifically watch the video all the way to the end. That's impactful. Right. Imagine right. 500 influencers watch that one video. You're going to reach a mess, or that video is going to help a lot of people. And I know you do a lot. You do a, a ton of that on your Instagram. Yes. Yes. We take... A lot of uh, the videos that I make, whether I'm doing a Facebook Live in my private group, I'm creating a YouTube channel, and we repurpose it in multiple different ways. But I've got YouTube videos from 10 years ago that have hundreds of thousands of views. I look back and go, holy cow, but those are people that I've helped while I'm sleeping or while I'm doing something else. And it's pretty amazing to think about that. But yes, it's it, the big thing is, is not being afraid or scared to speak because there are going to be people that don't agree with you and they're just not going to watch the video. So listen, I got tons of those people. And listen, I probably have more people disagreeing with me than I have people agreeing with me. Right. And that's when I realized we're doing something right because right. even though they don't agree, they still watch this stuff so they could disagree. So it's yeah. kind of like one of those. I'm like, if you disagree, why are you watching the videos? Don't watch the rest. You know, why are you right. confident? But it's so funny. I got man. an it's email so- about that. Just like a, 20 minutes ago, I sent out a message to my email list and it was like, stop fear mongering. I'm like, I'm not fear mongering. I'm telling you, like, I'm actually scared and this is what I'm doing about it. You should be doing the same thing. And I just, you know, archive, <laughs> you know, I don't delete it, but because I might need to come back and find out that they sent that to me later, but it's not my job to pay attention to that. It's my job to help the next person that gets benefit out of it, even if they don't exchange money with me. Yeah, definitely. I think monet- I think for entrepreneurs, it's it's the, we're going through that shift. I see that level of awareness being more higher. That mm-hmm. it, you don't have to put the content and get paid for it right there and there. Yes, we do need income, all of that stuff. That's cool, but you gotta have that delay also to be just right. put the good stuff out there and trust it that you will make money. So here's my other question: mm-hmm. as an individual, what are some of the methods that you do your own self-development what has helped you so far oh gosh well a lot of things like one i got to get my i got to exercise on a regular basis to clear my brain out so i can like focus two i read books i take self-development courses i'm actually doing like 
the um, wake up warrior, one of the wake up warrior challenges right now. I've done it through a yoga teacher training a, eight years ago. It includes a lot of personal development. I'm always doing that and asking questions, but, and I share the information and my wife and, and like partner, like we, we talk about it and she helps me, but yeah, there are things that I still have to work on myself. So I work on business, but I work on myself and I work on my fitness and you know, it's all a, a pro it's a process. I mean, it's never perfect. And some days I just got to recognize that, look, I'm a, I'm a work in progress. And even though I'm 46 years old, like, I still have, you know, another 50 years to go. So. No, definitely. I mean, the, 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 I feel like there's different levels of self-development. Mm -hmm. I think everybody starts. I think the beginning stages where a lot of people quit and they don't do it anymore is, I think, the first 10 years. I think right. the first 10 years, you just little by little increasing the level of awareness that you got. After that, you're like, okay, this is who I am. Now let me build from there. And then you go to phase two, because I think when you sit down and talk to those individuals, the conversations are different. Right. The level of awareness is different. The right. vocabulary that they will use is different. So my first 10 years, I was in that level where I was like, half the time I didn't understand what these coaches were saying. It was like right. they were talking to me in Chinese. I could, I could, I don't know how to say that. I understood. No, I can't say I understood the vocabulary. I knew what the vocabulary was. You didn't know how but to apply. But putting different sentences, I didn't know. I was like, right. okay, so what do we do with that? It looks yeah. fancy. It sounded yeah. good. But I'm like, how do we apply that? Like, right. we're not just here for it to sound good. It actually needs to do something. So what do we do with that? So I think that's, I don't know if you went through that to yourself. I had the same, I had the same experience. I was like, what are these people talking about? But the first step is kind of having the awareness or recognition that I still, just because I got out of college means I still have, doesn't mean I'm done learning. I have a lot more to learn about the world and business and myself and my relationships. And when I recognize that, now I got to figure out how do I get that information and apply it. So if somebody's trying to do, start their own business, entrepreneurship, whether they want to get online, whatever, they're just trying to do something from transitioning from nine to five job and going mm -hmm. into business. What would be one or two recommendations you have for those type of people? Yeah, figure out something that you're passionate doing or talking about or learning. And what's the problem other people have that you can solve? Because it's the bigger the problems you can solve, the bigger the reward, the impact and the financial gain that you'll get. But it should be something you love doing, not just something for the money. <laughs> It should be something that you have a passion for, as well as where other people have, where you have knowledge or expertise in an area that other people don't. And I, and I think you, you nailed it in the head. Passion is, I mean, you gotta be something, it's gotta be something that you get excited about or else you're just not gonna, every morning you're just gonna, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna take more energy to get that going. Here's my other question. A lot of people go through failure and temporary defeat. Mm -hmm. What are some of your remedies for that? Yeah, uh, recognizing that failure isn't fatal. Failure is an opportunity for learning and growth. Just because something didn't work didn't mean that, you know, it's not going to work in the future. I, I think a lot of people get there because they know, like, I know what you need, but you actually need to want it. And when I have something that I know you need, I also need to understand what my customer, potential customers think they want, because what they want might be different than what I need. And a lot of people get there and they go, it didn't work, I'm done, I'm quitting. But to me, it's like failure is not really my vocabulary. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna figure out another way around to make it work. I agree with that 100%. Listen, I wanna thank you so much for taking the, how do people find you? Um, at Aaron LeBauer on Instagram or AaronLeBauer.com. Awesome. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Um, hopefully, some of the topics we talk, we need to go yeah. into yeah. a little bit more in depth. So hopefully, I will reach out, be me and my team, and then we'll do some more videos to get a little bit more in depth. And definitely, if you need anything from our team, let us know. Would love to. Thank you so much for having me, Vahid. I'm honored to be here. You got it, brother. Talk right. to you soon. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye-bye.